Can there be too much of a good thing, even when it comes to kindness? Let's delve into this. We've all heard of kindness as a virtue, a quality to be admired and aspired to. But is there a line where kindness crosses over into excess? Could being too kind actually turn into a disadvantage? An intriguing thought, isn't it? Well, hold on to that curiosity because we're about to uncover the top five ways that being too kind can hurt you. Firstly, let's talk about the yes man syndrome. Picture this. You're the person everyone turns to, the one who can never say no. You're constantly taking on more tasks, more responsibilities, more of everything. It feels good to be needed, right? But what happens when your plate is piled too high? Stress starts creeping in, your calendar is bursting at the seams, you're running on fumes and your personal time is non-existent. This is the harsh reality of overcommitment. It's like a never-ending treadmill, speeding up until you're sprinting just to keep up. And the end result? Burnout. Exhaustion. A sense of being overwhelmed that can seep into every aspect of your life. So remember, it's okay to say no sometimes. Your time is valuable. Protect it. Prioritize it. Because at the end of the day, you can't pour from an empty cup. Next up, we explore the fine line between respect and perceived weakness. It's a curious conundrum, isn't it? We're taught to be kind, to be generous, to always lend a helping hand. But sometimes that very kindness can become a double-edged sword, often mistaken for weakness. Let's delve into the world of personal and professional relationships. Imagine being the person who is always there, always ready to assist, always the shoulder to lean on. You are the embodiment of kindness. But in the eyes of others, this constant readiness to help can sometimes be interpreted as a lack of backbone, a lack of assertiveness. They may start to perceive you as someone who can be easily walked over and before you know it, respect starts to dwindle. In professional settings, this can be particularly detrimental. A leader who is always kind, always accommodating, may find their authority undermined. Colleagues might start taking their kindness for granted, expecting leniency and overlooking deadlines. Subordinates might start to question their decision-making ability, interpreting their kindness as a reluctance to make tough calls. In personal relationships too, excessive kindness can lead to a loss of respect. Friends and family might start to take advantage of your good nature, leaning on you for everything and seldom reciprocating your kindness. You become the pushover, the one who can be called upon to make sacrifices because you're so nice. So how can we strike a balance? The key lies in being kind, but also assertive. Stand your ground when necessary. Learn to say no when you need to. Don't let your generosity be taken for granted. It's important to remember that respect is not something that's handed out freely, it's earned. And sometimes earning that respect means showing that you're more than just a kind soul. You're a person of substance, strength and resilience. Just remember, kindness is a virtue, but it is not the entirety of your character. You are more than your kindness. So stand your ground even as you continue to be kind. Now let's delve into the trap of self-neglect. When kindness is your default setting, it's easy to put others' needs ahead of your own. It's wonderful to be there for others, to lend an ear, a shoulder, or a helping hand. But while you're busy taking care of everyone else, who's taking care of you? Imagine your kindness as a candle. Every time you help someone else, you're burning a little bit of that candle. And if you're not careful, you might burn it right down to the wick. That's when self-neglect happens. It's when you're so busy looking out for others that you forget to look out for yourself. You might start missing meals because you're too busy helping a friend with their problems. Or maybe you're losing sleep because you're up late comforting a loved one. Perhaps you're even neglecting your own dreams and goals because you're too wrapped up in helping others achieve theirs. But here's the thing. Just like in an airplane emergency, you need to put on your oxygen mask first before helping others. If you're not taking care of your own health, both physically and mentally, then how can you expect to take care of others? Let's not forget about your personal goals and dreams either. They're important too. And while it's noble to help others achieve their goals, it shouldn't come at the expense of your own. So take time for yourself. It's not selfish. It's necessary. And remember, self-neglect doesn't just harm you. It can also affect the people you're trying to help. After all, if you're burnt out and exhausted, you're not going to be able to give your best to others. So make sure to set aside some time for self-care, whether it's taking a relaxing bath, going for a jog, or just curling up with a good book. Do something that's just for you and don't feel guilty about it. You're not being selfish. You're taking care of your own well-being so you can continue to take care of others. In the end, it's all about balance. Being kind and caring for others is wonderful. But don't forget to be kind and caring to yourself too. Remember, self-care is not selfish. Beware of the risk of manipulation. This cautionary note rings true, particularly for those who find themselves often on the giving end of kindness. You see, excessive kindness can sometimes act as a magnet, 
drawing in manipulative individuals who see an opportunity to exploit such generosity. Our world is a complex tapestry of personalities, motives and intentions. Not everyone has your best interests at heart. In this vast spectrum of human nature, there are those who are adept at recognizing and exploiting kindness for their personal gain. Imagine a scenario where an individual continually asks for your help, relying on your kindness to bail them out of situations they could and should handle themselves. With each request, they're testing the boundaries of your generosity. They're banking on your kind nature to avoid confrontation or discomfort. This isn't to say that you should turn away from those genuinely in need. The key is discernment, the ability to recognize the difference between authentic need and manipulative tactics. It's about understanding that it's okay to say no when the situation calls for it. Kindness, when given freely, can be a beautiful thing, but when it's continually taken advantage of, it can transform into a burden. It's essential to guard your generosity, to protect it from those who see it as a weakness to be exploited. In the end, it's about balance. It's about understanding the difference between helping someone and enabling them. It's about recognizing when your kindness is being valued and when it's being manipulated. So as you navigate the world with your kind heart, remember this. Kindness is a strength, not a weakness, but like all strengths, it must be used wisely. Guard your generosity and be aware of those who might exploit it. Lastly, let's discuss how being too kind can hinder personal growth. Picture this, you're always the one extending a helping hand, always the one offering a shoulder to lean on. While this paints a beautiful image of a compassionate soul, it may limit your opportunities for personal growth. Think about it. Personal growth often stems from overcoming challenges, from facing life's many obstacles head-on and emerging stronger, wiser, more resilient. But if you're always playing the role of the giver, always rushing to help others with their problems, when do you get the chance to grapple with your own challenges? Being the perpetual giver can also create a one-sided dynamic where you're constantly pouring into others but rarely receiving. This can lead to a lack of balance, an imbalance that can stunt personal growth. Moreover, when you're always the one offering solutions, you might miss out on the opportunity to learn from others, to gain wisdom from their experiences, their perspectives, and let's not forget about boundaries. Personal growth thrives in an environment where healthy boundaries are respected, but excessive kindness can blur these boundaries, leading to situations where your own needs, your own growth are sidelined. So while kindness is indeed a virtue, it's essential to remember that your personal growth is equally important. Finding the balance between giving and receiving is key to personal development. So what have we learned today about the pitfalls of excessive kindness? We've uncovered that saying yes too often, although rooted in kindness, can lead to an overwhelming schedule and personal burnout. We've also discussed how constant kindness might be misinterpreted as weakness, resulting in a loss of respect in our personal and professional relationships. We've highlighted the danger of self-neglect when we prioritize others' needs above our own, leading to a disregard for our health, our goals, and our well-being. We've explored the risk of attracting manipulative individuals who might exploit our generous nature. And finally, we've concluded that always being the giver could limit our opportunities for personal growth and learning from challenges. Remember, it's all about balance. Being kind doesn't mean neglecting yourself or allowing others to take advantage of you. Stay kind, but stay smart. Thank you for watching. We would love to hear your thoughts on finding a balance between kindness and self-care. Perhaps you have some experiences or suggestions to share. If you found this video helpful or insightful, remember to hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Stay tuned for more insightful videos. Remember, your kindness matters, but so do you.